your X ref, um, scale it, and then set up your layers with your line weights, layers for grid, and a layer for your X ref. So if I um, create a layer, let's go to layer properties. I'm going to do layer for X ref, and I'm going to do layer for grid. Um, I would write this down as well so that I don't have to come around individually to tell everyone this again. So make sure you do a layer for your X ref, a layer for your grid, and then a layer for each of your line weights as well. So your thick lines, medium lines, and your thin lines. Um, so for example, if I do this X ref layer and my grid layer, maybe I'll just assign this a color really quick. Red. Um, then if I come over here to my home layers, I'm going to set my current layer to grid. So when I start drawing, I'm drawing in the grid layer. So what I would do is start with this bay. Um, bays are what we call in between each uh, grid. So in between grid two and three is one bay. Three and four is one bay. That's kind of a structural term, but if you hear me say that, it means in between the grids. Um, really breaking the building up into chunks or different bays. So I would start here between two and three. Um, let's start drawing a line. I'll try my best to snap to the center. If it helps you to turn on snap, sometimes it's more hard than hurtful than helpful, but let's see if I can get it. That looks good. Um, and then I'm going to just type in seven foot six so that I'm not guessing, right? There's my line. And then I'm going to take that line straight down and set up my grid. So that's the first thing I would do is just get all of your grid <coughs> set up. So I'll come back here, I'm gonna do a line, I'm gonna snap to that, and I'm gonna do, type in seven foot six again, bring back down, and I'm gonna snap to that. So you wanna actually set up grid, so you want to actually draw the line with the little circle and the number in it. So once you're done, like I use that as a reference to measure seven foot six, I can delete that, I can delete that. Let's do a circle. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. That looks similar. I'm gonna move that circle down, connect it, um, and then you can write a number three in there. So you're gonna start by setting up your grids. So again, you're just measuring seven foot six line, seven foot six line, seven foot six. I have dimensions on all of these. So again, like this one for example is. 29 feet, 1 and 100 and 1 over 112. So just make it 29 feet. Um, this is just how the reference drawing was dimensioned. Again, 7 foot 6, 7 foot 6. You can make this one 7 foot 6, 7 foot 6. And then this last bay, um, 7 feet 10 inches, 10 and a quarter. So just make it 7 foot 10. So if you see a weird wonky number like this, check your PDF. Um, see what it says on the PDF if you can't read it, and then just round it. That's why you're only using this as a reference, right? You're tracing over it, but it might be slightly off if you're keeping full numbers. Um, so we'll talk about that kind of as we get into it. But first thing I would do is set up those grids. So you're just going to go through on grid layer and draw out grids for yourself. This one's got a dimension 19 foot 4 over here. That's a nice little number, so you can draw those grids 19 four apart. And then once you've got your grid, that's really going to help you be able to align anything aligned with the grid, the panels of the building, the exterior, where you have these beams and panels sitting. So the beam should sit roughly centered on that grid line. Does that make sense? Um, and again, I'm not going to grade you on your dimensioning. I'm not going to require you to dimension anything. Um, we just want the drawing to be as accurate as possible so that when you take that into Rhino, you're able to use that model. Um, so you do want to set up your grids first. So I have those grids on the grid layer. Now I'm going to put the X ref on its own layer. So if I click the X ref and I go back to home layers, it's on layer zero. So let's put it on the X ref layer. Let's make sure if I click the X ref again, It'll take you to this tab that says PDF underlay, right? It's gonna give you like options, but if you go back to home and layers and hover over that, you can see what layer it's on. So it's on layer extra, which is good. Now in my layer properties, if I go into that extra layer, I'm just gonna click the little no print. So if you just click the printer once, we want that not to print. 
So at the end of the day, we want your drawing on top of this to be printed and not the underlay. Does that make sense? So I just turned that layer off so it doesn't print. Um, so let's test that. For example, if I came in here, right, I'm ready to test this. And I encourage you guys to test it frequently. So like maybe once you have your grids laid out, let's do a test print, make sure your layers are looking good. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in there and do Control P. Um, let's see, set this to Microsoft Print to PDF, letter, let's do print preview, right? So all you should see is the new lines that you've drawn. Um, and of course you'll turn those black eventually to print, but don't worry about that quite yet um, as you're testing it. So you want to test it for the line weight, right? Is it too thick? Do you need to make it thinner? Does it, is it readable? Um, and does it look accurate? So when you zoom in, you might see like, oh, that's not connected, or maybe these aren't aligned. That's what the test printing will help you do. Um, so that'll be the underlay. Turn it off. Another thing you can always do is manage your XREF. So if you type in XREF and hit enter, it's going to show you any XREF that's loaded in. Um, right? So this is the Eames House Drawing XREF. It's saved on the desktop. You can always right click um, to see more information about it. You can always right click where it says loaded to unload or detach. That's going to turn it off. Essentially, that's going to delete it from your file. Um, so what I would do for now is just leave it in there and continue to test print to see what your drawing is looking like. Because um, then you'd have to reload it back in, make sure it's scaled and everything. So set up your um, layers. Make sure you have your line weights right. You're going to want to do thick lines for anything being cut through. So these beams here, these little H beams, they look like little H's, right? Those would be a thick line because they're being cut through. The wall panels will be a thick line because they're being cut through. Same with these interior walls here, right? These are thick lines because they're being cut through. Where you want to do a thinner line weight or a medium line weight is your doors. So door swings here, any type of detail like that where you have a stair, um, you're showing a countertop, or a closet, you want to do those a thin line weight. So if you're taking notes, I would write this stuff down so you can remember it when you start getting into your drawing. So those are the items I would do thin line weights. Um, your grids, you can probably do a medium line weight. So medium line weight for grids, thick line weights for anything being cut through. This part is a stair going up to a loft, and then this is open to below. So remember, this is not being cut through because this is above. So that's just your normal medium line weight. Um, so you've got a ground floor and then a first floor, which is really the next level. And then you have your elevation views. So those are more straightforward. They're actually pretty flat, right? If you take a look, at the images of the Eames house, it's really like two boxes. You've got one box here and one box here. Um, so for the line weights, I would do um, try them all in like medium line weight, maybe with the structure being a little bit thicker. Um, see how that looks, but there's not going to be a lot of depth that you're showing in the elevation. So those will be pretty straightforward. Um, and then remember, you're only doing the elevation number one north elevation and south elevation number one, you can ignore these other two. So maybe when you start your file for yourself, um, maybe just X these out so that you remember not doing this. Yes? Okay.